Playoff football is here in the WIAA, and man, it couldn't have gotten off to a better start, at least for the game that we were at. It's, so yeah. it was fantastic. Along with Eric Rogers, I'm Rich Reynolds. This is the Supercharged Foods rundown of the level one playoffs. And we'll start in the Big 8 Conference, talk about Big 8 uh, schools before we get to the game that we were actually at, mm. which there was so much to talk about there. But uh, not a good weekend for the Big 8 Conference yeah, as a whole. A bad showing when you have six Big 8 teams in the playoffs and then you have uh, all of them eliminated except for Sun Prairie. Uh, obviously you have some cannibalism there with Big 8 versus Big 8 games, but boy, not a good showing for the Big 8. Sun Prairie does advance and uh, we'll hit on that game first. I think we should start there. Yeah, yeah, and let's talk about that and what a wild, wacky game. We had 57 points by halftime. Uh, I mean, it was just absolutely nuts. Was it 57? I don't know. Maybe the math, my math is off. Uh, the viewers was, didn't know. I think it was 30 to 27 <laughs> yeah. at halftime. Middleton on top. Middleton was up by three going into the fourth quarter. Right. Uh, Sun Prairie ends up pulling away. And just huge plays. Kelly and Buckner going off with a kick return for a touchdown. A long run. A long catch for a touchdown. All great stuff. And Sun Prairie just starting to dominate in the second half with their defense. If you were to have looked at Buckner's stat line and all the stuff that he did in that game, you'd think, oh, Middleton came away with the win, yeah. and, and boy, they, sh they they put forth an effort that was definitely worth a win. Uh, unfortunately, Sun Prairie just that much better in that game and, and didn't shoot themselves in the foot in some of those instances. Like, Middleton had those, as you mentioned in the broadcast, so many low snaps, and that was yeah. a problem. It definitely was a problem. That hurt them. Uh, amazingly, Sun Prairie does it, puts 42 points up without Cooper Nelson, largely, who uh, I think was injured. We don't know for sure early on, but he was in the game in that first series and then was gone mostly for the rest of the game. He'd pop in and out every once in a while, but he looked kind of gingerly walking around on that foot. I don't know how that's going to play forward for Sun Prairie, but you got to think as they go higher up in the playoffs, they're going to need that connection of Gillis to uh, Nelson. I think yeah, that's going to be obviously a, a big storyline for them, but if you, you know, watching that broadcast this weekend, maybe you thought, yeah, maybe they didn't need Nelson too badly, and uh, you know, it's you'd like to win by a bigger margin than that, but Boy, a nail biter that uh, we enjoyed for sure. Yeah, good showing by Colin Schaefer coming back, who had only played two games prior to this. Nathan Shower looked really strong running the football and was definitely feeling it. But yeah, overall, Big A Conference all out except for Sun Prairie. Wow, I mean that's a, a devastating kind Six of Six lead changes in that game, boy. That was a that was a big one. And one heck of a football. Uh, let's let's game. talk to the other side of that. Uh, who they're actually going to be playing this week as well? If you want to just touch a, a couple storylines here on Sussex Hamilton beating Madison Memorials, upsetting them at home, 35-21. Uh, I think that's going to be a game that you know you look at and say Memorial had a great season. Mm -hmm. They didn't quite get there, and Sun Prairie, I'm sure, would have liked to see that too. That they game. were hoping um, for it. Coach Kaminsky yeah. said he wanted it. Yeah. So I think that's uh, worth noting there. And uh, Spartans were down 21-0 at halftime. I think that'll tell the story there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there we go. That's the Big 8. How about the Badger North Conference? Kind of a scare for the top of the conference there in Wanakee. Amazingly, the Warriors were only up 7 to nothing at halftime against Baraboo. If you're the Thunderbirds, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. Yeah. You're like, hey, yeah, we're in this ball game. You know, we just got to do a couple things here. Uh, you know, and you, you think about what that game was. Uh, Jarrett Wolf, the quarterback for Anaki, 16 of 22, 199 yards. He was human, uh, had one rushing touchdown, no passing touchdowns. So you think, you know, maybe there is some blueprint there for teams moving forward and what you can do to Anaki to slow them down. But uh, that run game, again, uh, Evans Wetler, two rushing touchdowns. So still the ground game, a big part of Anaki's offense. Absolutely. And they're going to face DeForest in level two on the playoffs and a rivalry game. I mean, there's usually none bigger as far as a rivalry between Wanakee and DeForest. And DeForest comes away with a hard-fought victory against Holman. So they go to Wanakee next and play and play the Warriors. I got to think, though, Coach Rice is going to have that Warrior team kind of fired up for level two. I, I would think so. And you have a little bit of a, a, a stumble on, on that first round there. And you think, hey, this is postseason play. We can't have some of these mistakes. And uh, they're going to, you would think, clean those up in, in level two. Don't want to overlook the Vikings. Uh, Mount Hoare Barneveld, a winner over Berlin. Inch that one out. That was a close Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So moving on, are the Vikings. Badger South taking a look there. Monona Grove rolls over Stoughton for the second time in a, in a month, basically, and they have handled everybody in the Badger South with ease. It'll be interesting to see Monona Grove stepping out of the Badger South now as they'll take on Lacrosse Central, who snuck out a win coming from behind to beat your alma mater. I know. The Panthers <laughs> were looking good. They had they had that game kind of, uh, you know, 17-7 halftime lead. Things were looking 
uh, like they were in a good place. Johnny Davis, a quarterback for Lacrosse Central, had a 12-yard touchdown to give the Red Raiders their first lead with 4.48 remaining. Then they had an interception late that sealed that game. So some small mistakes by Oregon costing them that one. And then, uh, as you mentioned, they're going to be facing Monona Grove. And that will be a big game to set up a potential week three with Wanakee. Yeah, that Monona grove Wanakee matchup almost seems destined, you know. And Love to see that. Yeah, yeah, those crossover games, the Badger North, South, all of that kind of stuff. It, it brings back a game from a couple years ago with Alec Ogden. And, I mean, just good stuff right there. So that'd be interesting. Don't want to leave out Watertown, by the way. The Goslings roll in their game and move on to face uh, Homestead then. But uh, the Goslings, maybe a team to look out for. There's some talent They've Made there. an adjustment to the Badger South for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So we're not sure where we're going to be, if it's going to be level two or level three. We got another playoff game in us. Um, we'll give you the good one. We'll give you the best one we got. Exactly. We got. That's what we are shooting for. So for Eric, I'm Rich. That is your WIAA wrap-up presented by Supercharged Foods.